So hello everyone. Welcome to our event, how to grow uh, your followers on LinkedIn. This is an event for all professionals in energy efficiency and sustainability sector. Uh, today in our own link workshop, we have uh, uh, our legend, Paul Webb. Hi, Paul. We are all curious uh, Hi, to I'm learn here. from you and we cannot wait to implement all your tips after our workshop. So uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and um, welcome everybody to uh, today's workshop. Um, and I must say it's a, a great privilege to be here today. And thank you, Elvira, for twisting my arm and saying that I needed to come and do this with you guys. And um, obviously, um, I have been very successful with what I've been doing um, since I would say the end of 2019. I was playing with it in the middle of, of 2019. And I'll tell you that story, um, which you've probably heard quite a few times on my podcast. That I recently do. So um, I heard something this morning and it wasn't about social media. It was about websites, but I've, I'm going to adapt that. And basically this guy was saying, if you do social media, it may work. Okay. But if you don't do social media, it won't work. So if you just take those phrases and just think about doing the social media and what you need to do, you need to turn up and actually apply yourself to doing the social media. And for me, I don't see why not, because it's actually free. There's a lot of free marketing you get from, from it and it's global. So if you want to try and develop your story and your messages globally, you've got a massive platform there of people that currently in our industry want to learn and want to understand more from from people that have been there and seen it done it and in 2019 I was posting quite a lot of information and, and details about myself on LinkedIn but what I wasn't doing I wasn't using my own content I was using other people's content so I, I actually changed that and um, if you listen to my last podcast it was um, with a a lady who I now call the LinkedIn lady, Vanini Vig. And we had a one-to-one -one and she kept saying to me that she wanted to help me with my LinkedIn. And she said, the only way I can help you with your LinkedIn, it's all great stuff, but you need to use your own content. You need to be putting your story out. You know, 42 years of experience, there's a lot of story there and a lot of information that I can give back, which is something I want to do. And she said to me, we need, you need to do more videos. And I can feel my stomach now turning over, just thinking about doing more video. Listen to my voice, okay? I'm from the East End. I'm an Essex boy, and I've got an accent. But it's funny. American people like my accent, and other people like my accent. But I, and everyone doesn't like to hear their voice um, on TV or on radio. So I said, okay, I get that. What, what, what should I do? So she took her phone out and she videoed me there and then in the middle of this reception. And she asked me a simple question. Tell me what you do. So me being me, I sort of went into my own little story about energy management, how important it is, third largest expense, etc. And we played this video back and we said, do you know what? We can make that work. And we did. We went off and we've done what we did Lovely. then. We've done a load of battery. We done, we done a load of batch recording and we videoed probably about six or seven batch uh, videos, um, which is that's a story on its own. Um, and we produced them. They were not spending much money on the videos and the content of it. Um, and it was very successful. And I did actually achieve quite a lot of community growth on that and some business actually. Um, but I'm going to sort of go through sort of five points really, which I've learned have become very important to me regarding that side of it. So I'm going to go into them now. And really the, the most important point on all of this is your comfort zone. You must take a step out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid of what you've got to say if you believe in it and you've got the passion on what you're saying put it out there put the messages out there if it's in a message or a video or whatever don't be 
don't worry. You know, if you really believe and you've got that passion and you want to tell someone about, so for me, take it, I believe that energy management is, or energy is an organization's third largest expense. And I get loads of people challenging me on that. Yes, I do. But I believe in it. And that's something I would want to make um, important to an organization, you know, to, to put their focus on energy management. So I believe in that. And I put it out there and I put it out there on a regular basis. But in the beginning, yeah, I, I had this um, sort of complex or what are people going to think about me? What are people going to say? They're not going to say anything. You know, you're out there being you, putting yourself on, you know, in, in, the, in the, the battlefield. You're putting yourself out there. So you must push yourself out of your comfort zone. That's the first really important thing if you want to grow your community and grow your position. The next point I want to pick up on is consistency. So, yes, I did a video and I put my post out there on day one. Sorry. I put my post out there on day one. But then I did another post the next day and the next day and the next day. I post every single day. Um, Monday to Friday is my key posting times. But I do sometimes do Saturday and Sunday if I've got the content and I've got stories that I want to follow up on. So be consistent. Put together a strategy and be consistent with that strategy and, and go out there every week and every day and have a strategy regarding what you're posting. I know what I'm going to be posting for the next four days normally now because I've, I've got into the trend and I can wake up some mornings not knowing what I'm going to post. I know I've got a, a theory to post and I'll talk about my theory on, on the posting side of it, but I will, something will come to me because I've been doing it so regularly, really. The next thing is content. So you're, you'll notice that these are becoming the five C's. I have a habit of putting things into uh, little subjects, but these are my five C's. So we've had the comfort zone. We've had the consistency. We're now going to talk about content. This is something that people will struggle with, finding that content. Um, but what I found um, in 2020, so I've been doing it for 12 months, and I was sort of struggling with a little bit of the content because I didn't want to be repetitive. So I started writing small blogs, which turned into articles. So every week I was writing articles. Now, an article with um, a subject as such will actually generate in the region of, it's a very vast number, about probably 200 to 300 different posts from that. And where does that come from? Well, for instance, let's take energy management. Uh, energy is your third largest expense. I could write an article on that. Well, there's a subject line for that already. I could put that on a picture. There's another post. So that could be my Tuesday post. Wednesday, I could list what areas to focus on regarding that third largest expense. Thursday, I can then talk about how I deliver energy management on the third largest expense. The challenges on that. Can you see how that starts to build up your content? So already I've got a week's worth of posting and a strategy around that subject. So every week I'd write an article. And you know, some people would say, oh, writing an article everywhere, that's, that's a lot of work. Once I got in the flow and the system of doing that, I had a, a I was writing an article and I actually wrote in total of a hundred articles over a period of time. And my second book actually is my first 50 articles that I wrote, um, which were the 50, um, 50, um, what is it called? It, well, it's called 52 weeks of energy management. And I wrote, that's how I got the theme of writing that book. And those articles were the basis of my, um, my post going forward. So content's important and building your own content. And I think when you look at your, at the algorithm, the algorithm likes you using your own content rather than using other people's contents. The next one is control your focus. Okay. And control what you're doing and plan that out. So, um, oh, it was controlled eight o'clock every morning. I was focused on implementing that and then going back to the content and then the consistency of that focus. Okay. And then lastly, 
sort of bring that all together was to sort of have a strategy and center your strategy around the LinkedIn and what the strategy you're, you're going to do, deliver. And my strategy was very simple. Okay. Monday is always motivational Monday. Tuesday now is my top uh, B2B energy toolbox tips. Tuesday, Wednesday is always winning Wednesday. And my winning Wednesday, I talk about my podcast. Thursday is technology Thursday, where I bring in technologies from around the world. And then Friday is my um, podcast where I launch the podcast. Saturday, I normally bring in a little bit of personal stuff about myself. And then Sunday is normally a graphic where I'm talking about training, I'm talking about energy management, or I'm talking about various different uh, things around the industry. And it's normally a graphic that I've put together for the Sunday post. And then Monday, I'm starting all over again. Now, I haven't mentioned articles there, but because I've written all the articles, I've got 100 plus articles in my kit bag that I can go and just into those and just pull them through. And I still use those articles. Um, if I'm talking to someone about a particular subject, they may come up and I may bring them in. Now, this is something I don't do, but I recommend it's a good thing to do. And that's repurposing your quotes because and your posts and things because so my uh, community has been growing and growing and growing and growing it's now growing about a thousand people every month roughly now and if you imagine if i pick up say a hundred people this week they may have not seen some of the stuff i put out first of all so i can repurpose you have to be careful about repurposing but you can repurpose your posts as you go i haven't yet done that um, I sometimes do a throwback Thursday where I might bring something forward um, from the past. Um, but that's something that I I would sometimes do, but not on a regular basis. So there we have the five C's, which was um, comfort zone, consistency, content, controlling your focus, and then center your strategy around what you're doing. Now, that strategy helped me grow my um community from about 4,000 to 24,000 people um, over since 2019. It's not easy. Um, I wouldn't say that this has happened on a regular basis, um, an easy basis. You do have to work at it and you do have to stay focused and ensure your strategy is working. Some areas that um, have helped me with that. So it isn't all about waiting for people to come to me. I have a strategy where I build my community. So I go researching people, the people I want to speak to. So I would have lists of the type of person that I would want to speak to based on what I'm posting. So, you know, I put a lot of focus into SME organizations. So I'd look for managing directors or organizations for that. And there's different ways you can search for people um, regarding the search bar. Um, and there's, um, a particular thing you could, so you could type in, I want to speak to energy managers. So you type in energy managers. And then if you put in speech marks, London, that will bring up all the energy managers in the London area. So you can use speech marks as defining your, your searches. I find that very useful. So I could go managing director, speech marks, um, and think of the industry. Um, food industry. So managing director, hashtag food. And that might bring all managing directors in the food industry or whatever um, industry that I'm particularly looking for or whatever country I want to look for. So you can use that a lot. And the speech marks does define your searches um, to break that all down. Um, and as I say, I built a strategy and my strategy changes on a regular basis, but I always form it around the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For instance, Motivational Monday, um, Testimonial Tuesday, um, Throwback Thursdays, etc. So you can always use that. So I do build it and I keep it fresh. I may change it on a regular basis. Um. One area that obviously you need to be aware of, obviously there is an algorithm 
don't chase the algorithm. You, we have got to play the algorithm or beat the algorithm, but don't make it the pressure on on your life as such. You know, because it's there, it's there to control it, to stop spamming, to stop um, the people attacking regarding selling and, and things like that. Is to keep it professional. You know, LinkedIn is like a Facebook, but it isn't a Facebook. It's a professional community. And there's professional people on there that we all want to speak to. So it does actually play two sides of it. You know, it, it protects the other person and it also protects you. So, um, but there is an algorithm. Um, so when you do your posting, you need to work the post for the first hour at least. So time it well regarding the, the posting. So when you do post it, um, I, so you will notice if you've ever commented on any of my posts, it's me personally that answers. It's me that posts it. I don't use any um, automation. I will answer it. I will then engage. If you send me a direct message, it's me that answers the direct message. I work then post. Not always. I'm, I, I can be quite busy. Um, and then if I've done a timed post, which is I normally try and do eight o'clock in the morning, I will be in and around my phone, making sure that I will follow up on that. Um, you will notice sometimes if you do follow me, I'm, I sometimes say I'm, I'm posting like an American today, but I'll post in the afternoon because some people follow me from America as well. So eight o'clock is a, is a prime time in your country to post. Um, but if you wanted to, you could flip to say later on in the afternoon, if it, impacts on the time zones. Um, and sort of the, my last point really is the community you set up is for you then to nurture and work with. So I, I can't confess that I know every 24,000 people to on my, my group as such, but if any of them, I don't have any emails unread. I don't have any, any comments. So work with them. If anyone asks that question, you give them an answer, you work with them. And, you know, it's taken me a long time to grow that community. I want to keep that community and work with them. So, you know, don't just be a, a it's not a numbers game. It's, it's, as I say, it's focused and controlled. And those people that come to talk to me, they will, obviously, I will share information with them. I've just actually got off a call now with someone who is in the Navy. He's coming out of the Navy at the um, in December, and he's looking for support. I reached out to him. He, he reached out to me regarding that. I've reached out to him and said, come have, have a meeting with me. So I've just had a Zoom call with him to help him with his career. Yeah, I, I run a business and I'm working on various different businesses. As you know, I'm, I'm the chair of Umlink as well. But I do find time for people. With, and I send them my calendar link. If they find time in my diary, then it's time for me to share back into the community. Um, I've actually said quite a lot on my building of my community as such. Um, I'm more than happy to take some questions from the group today, if there is any. If you don't want to talk, you can um, put them on the in the chat if you wish. Yes, thank you, Paul. I think uh, we have here uh, Henrique, Pascal, uh, Sonal, Rajat. Please feel free to, uh, to, to, to ask any questions because I also know that you're growing your own communities in your field. And I think it's so important to, I was listening to you and I, I think it is so important to grow this community, not, as you said, not just because of numbers, but actually because we all work in the uh, on the sustainability and energy efficiency. So we really want to bring this message to as many people as possible. And um, I think I'll just maybe ask one question from my side, since uh, everyone is still shy, uh, but I'll start. Um, you're talking about reaching out to people and uh, that network networking is very important also there, right? So it's not that people just find you, but you also find people. Um, sometimes I feel a bit sad that uh, well, I don't have as many followers, uh, like it's below 1000. Uh, but I feel that only some and I know that just a few person see my post 
from the from the full network. So uh, sometimes I just feel sad that not everyone can see my information and people that actually that I want to reach to, they they don't see me also because of these algorithms. Yeah. How do you usually approach people when you want to find someone? You want to talk with energy manager from food industry. What would you, how do you, how would you approach? How would you write? How you would, what would you ask him or her? I, I, I never actually send messages to people um mm -hmm. unless um you know i i am in a very good position because i've got a podcast so yes. um i would one of my easy ones are come and join me on my podcast i'd love to interview you you know especially energy managers there's uh, i've interviewed quite a few people in that sector i have reached out to some key people that i'd love to interview but they've never answered my my messages but you've got to be subtle i think you've um just liking, first of all, we get, everyone gets to know that you view their profile. So if someone, if you view their profile, then that's going to trigger them to know that you've, they've been viewed by you. So that's a little bit of an, uh, and also an in point. If they view you back, you know, there could be something. If you're liking mm -hmm. their stuff and they sometimes, if someone likes my posts, that is a, a little bit of a crack door as such to to speak to somebody um and i have actually sort of spoken to quite a few people who've, who've liked it and all i've done is said thank you very much for liking my post appreciate you your sort of input and, and following you know they may have commented as well you know again they're the good points but i don't i don't send messages to them um to you know to say ah oh, i can i can help you you know i don't do none of that i try to my content uh, that i put out i i don't even put a call to action on it i should put more call to action on it but i'm i'm more focused on giving information and and seeking people from that because where where you give doesn't mean you're going to get it given back there and then it could come from a different area and that's what i find happens so for instance today i've taken a phone call from today i've been putting some stuff on linkedin for the last 16 weeks with my toolbox tips i've actually replicating that on to youtube um i'm not getting fantastic people sort of um fantastic amount of people feeding back on it or whatever it's been a bit quiet lately because we've gone through this transition. I think everyone was on um, online, on lockdown. Everyone was on Zoom calls all the time. And it's like we we are now trying to transition back to the real life as such. So I think we've seen a, we see LinkedIn really peak and we've now seen it sort of go down a little bit. And I think that will, it will never disappear, but it will be. Um, so I I give there, but it comes back in other areas. That makes sense. So I took a phone call today and some guy, um, a friend of mine who I spoke about um, 18 months ago said, Paul, I asked you to do this for me. Nothing happened, but now it's starting to happen. Can you help us? So things come back in different places where you put. So don't put stuff in thinking you're going to get, get it back. It doesn't happen like that. You've got to really, you know, as I say, control the focus. Don't get carried away. Don't say, right, I've put all this information in. No one's liking my stuff. There's a, so LinkedIn's made up of different types of people. There's the people that sit back and look and watch, but it all goes in. They know when that day comes. And there's people that will engage. Do you know, it was on my podcast. This is a, this is a question. Does, does anyone remember the percentage of people that are key people of influence and that are talking about industries and their business online at the moment on LinkedIn? What are the percentages? There's about 850 million members on LinkedIn. And what mm -hmm. do you think the percentage is of the people that are out there posting all the time? Did you remember that question on, on my podcast? I, don't, I, I remember, but I don't remember what is the percentage. It's 1%. One percent, yeah, that's There's crazy. very, very little. So if you're out there posting, you're going to be part of that one percent of people posting their content out there. 
there's good opportunities that it's going to come back one day, isn't it? That's true. But is it 1% of people that are posting consistently, right? No, no. 1% of the 850 people are actually, actually doing key, key influencers and they're posting. Okay. There's a That's lot of people. That's amazing. Do you know, I meet people when I go to conferences, when I go to, uh, I, I went to a presentation recently in energy and I had about two or three people come up to me and said, oh, hi, Paul, how's it going? And I'm thinking, I, I've never met you before. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't say it like that term because I know where they've, they've mm -hmm. known, they know me from. And I'm thinking, why don't you, why don't you say hello to me online? You know, rather than, you know, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there. That's I amazing. It, yeah, I, yeah, I think amazing. just to provide you information that you that you have and just share it uh, and not and not asking anything back. I think it's very important. And don't be shy. Don't be shy about giving information. That's great. Because people will come back to you and say, "Look, you've been talking about this. Can you advise us? Can you help us? You know, you've you're obviously an expert in this." Yes. Thank you. So I see here Hendrik has also a um, question. Well, that's a sign? Yeah, it, it, it's a sign that, <laughs> do you know when the, the brand barrel will stop go going up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know how to control it when you're using it. I know how to reduce the amount of oil to use. Yeah. Do you know, I, 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 I have got a theory on that. I don't think we, we people are going to think that we are going to go through this, but we're not. I think we probably got about four or five years of this time where we're going to go through very high prices. Do you know, I was, um, what year was that? 2012. It's, it was just announced. No, 2011. It was just announced that um, the UK was going to have to win um, the Olympic Games. Okay. And I was due to go for a, a meeting with a very, very large retail organization. And we were threatening that the energy price was going to go up to 12 pence per kilowatt. And we were all going, oh, 12 pence. That's a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> I can't oh. imagine it being 12 pence, 12 pence. I know it's, I've seen it at 48 pence recently. And, you know, one of my clients um, has seen a significant increase in energy. Um, and Tracy and I have just had a, been uh, for a walk um, today and we had a bit of a, a business lunch and a sandwich and a cup of coffee. And um, I thank this lady because she was the savior through, through my lockdown. So it's, this cafe is near where I used to live and, Every lunchtime, we'd go there and have a sandwich. She opened up. She had this this calf turned into just a little plastic hatch and used to go and buy your sandwiches and sit outside. And um, really lovely little place. And I said, oh, thank you for sort of staying open and making. She goes, oh, it was, it was really tough. We, one minute was furloughing, then we half furloughs, et cetera. And I said, how are you finding things now? She goes, oh, We've got through all of that, and now our energy prices are doubled. You know, and I feel sorry for these businesses, these hospitality type businesses, because they've had all that hassle of um, not having um, sort of be able to open and things or open or pivot in their businesses. And now they're hit with this increased cost. And us as energy consultants need to work with them. So I'm, I'm going to help her hopefully with her, um, her energy to get her cost down. But, you know, energy management, we need to support these organizations because it's going to be a tough time. And, you know, I would say over the next five years. So going back to my ooh, 12 pence, now it's, ooh, 50p, that's a lot. Of, that's a yeah, big difference. And, and the, the cheapest one is the one we, we don't consume, right? Because exactly. most, part, most part of the people just think about, okay, uh, how can I bring the price down? If you are working in uh, spot markets or even in in uh, future markets, uh, 
you can't control that. You don't know. Uh, you might use indexes such as Brent or TTA for whatever it is. And um, they are managed by, by feelings. Mm. So you can't control where, where the price will be. You, the only thing, I keep saying that at home as well, the only thing we can control is switch on and or off or keep it off. That's the only thing we can do. I'm um, trialing in my bathroom at the moment. So I've got loads of spotlights in there. And um, it's, it's a very little thing, but I've brought myself these cheap rocks with a, with a solar panel on the top. And I've got them on the windowsill. And the light isn't great in there, but I've still got light and I'm not paying anything for that light. Exactly. So during the day, it's heat, um, heating up. It's, it's charging. Charging the battery. And at night, and do you know those lights are still on in the morning when I go to, um, to clean my teeth and things and get ready for work? They're still on. And as I say, it's not perfect, but it's a way of reducing your energy. Yeah. You know, and I think solar... We'll, we'll see a lot of that come. I wrote about it this week in a, on a post. And I see, I think that we will see a lot of um, light, external lights transitioning to solar, definitely going forward. And suddenly we moved out from LinkedIn into energy. Well, I. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm>, Elvira, too. <laughs> Enrique, the. Um, so that's what I talk about. I'm an energy expert talking about energy every day on LinkedIn. Just uh, incidentally, um, so I, personally, LinkedIn is a professional platform for people to work on. And I think I'm sure everyone on this call today, that is the area we need to be placed and, and put in posts, etc. However, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and TikTok. TikTok. Yep. Those five accounts, I have accounts on all of those. They are mainly um, post boards to say or signposts to tell people to come back to LinkedIn. That's where I normally live as such because LinkedIn's my office, but I have got presence on all of them. Um, if someone was to Google me as a person, they would find roughly about 11 hours of content to, to, of, of myself, of all these different platforms. And um, with YouTube, why not? Because YouTube's actually owned by Google. So do you think I'm going to be found more if I've got a YouTube channel? Because I've put in, because Google are going to promote their YouTube, their platform. So if you type Paul Webb, you're going to get Paul Webb's videos come up first of all. Yep. But well, if you type Paul Webb, energy expert, you get loads of stuff come up. So we need to be seen. We need to be, you need to be able to be found as well. That's really one of the main points of that. And I've, I've kicked out some people or at least told LinkedIn for some people that were posting personal things. So uh, I also consider LinkedIn as a professional network, not a, a, exhibition network such as yeah. uh, instagram and TikTok and and facebook i have i have on on, on two of them facebook and, and instagram but i don't use them uh, just to post some uh, i have to confess I, I use facebook to remember the um, the birthdays of my friends <laughs> yeah <laughs> good idea good idea <laughs> I don't really use Facebook that much, um, but I find sometimes when I post stuff, it replicates onto Facebook. Um, when I post on LinkedIn, it replicates into Twitter. I'd love to build Twitter. I don't really get the platform, but I'd love to build my, you know, I haven't got, I've got 90 people, I think, follow me on Twitter. Uh, when when you post on Facebook, it automatically suggests to post on Instagram because they yeah. belong to each other. And and vice versa, I think. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. We we just put pictures on Instagram of things we've seen and, and things that mean something to us. 
um, around the business. Um, so all our team have the that account. Um, but LinkedIn is is my personal. So I believe in building the personal profile first and then the brand afterwards. So you'll always see Paul Webb, B2B Energy, Umlink. And why why is the is the um, the algorithm? Uh, although we grow, I, I'm I'm growing my network. I don't know how many people is now on my network. Uh, I have five thousand followers, perhaps. Uh, but the, um, the the sales navigator, the social selling index, keeps going down and down and down. Um, because uh, here it has four components, four components for your score, establish your professional brand. I'm working a lot on that. Finding the right people. I got more connect, more and more connections on the related subjects. So I, su I suppose that eventually my, my keywords are not aligned with the um, with the people that is finding me and that I'm finding eventually. Mm. Uh, that's why I see this. That, then the other one engage with insights, okay, and build relationships. I have the maximum on this one. So it's but it started by in on seventy five percent and now it's going down to seventy one. But yeah, I, mine mine normally sits in the seventies. I don't really, I haven't looked at it for a long time. I know for a long time I was on the So I, I just saw it now. Yeah. Because it it, for me, that isn't important. Um, I I don't really have a KPI on, um, on LinkedIn that I would really focus on. My only KPI I do focus on is emails I receive. So if I'm not receiving emails, then I know I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. The likes and the comments, yeah, they're, they're nice to have. The views are, are nice to see how different, but I can guarantee I can put a pic, I put a picture of my push bike on a on the beach once when I was, went out cycling and that went through the roof. Loads of people liked it, loads of people commented, and I got 15,000 people yeah, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason. What I put something really important that we everyone needs to know about energy, and I probably don't get many people, thousand people, may. But as I said before, don't fight fight the algorithm because if you're fighting the algorithm, you're fighting the whole system, and yep. yeah, just be surf, yourself. Just, post just surf the, the wave, yeah. yes, and be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the profile side is important, building your profile and getting all the right wording in there. What you need to tell people, who you are, what you do, and how you can help them in three points. You know, if you put that out there, then that should encourage people to look at your profile. Professional picture. My, so my picture is a professional picture. Um, I had that done in 2019. Um, I've got a professional backdrop as well. Um, if you've got them, that's a good starting point. Um, I know it's a lot of people out there with drinks in their hands and, and bike on a boat with their sunglasses on their heads and it needs to be a professional picture. The, and you've got three seconds to impress someone before they're gone. So professional picture, good backdrop, first couple of lines, Bang. If you can get that right, you've got a starting point. Thank you very much for your time. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I just had some, here some comments. Uh, thank you for the wonderful inputs. Nice to take away uh, that to come out of comfort zone. I think we will all try it uh, <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> You'll see a lot of posts on, on LinkedIn tomorrow coming out of a comfort zone. Perfect. Thank you so much. If you have anything to add, maybe right now, or we can already close our no, meeting. Um, 
I'd like to say, please, you and your families be safe in these times. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.